She is the former EPA administrator under President Obama and the director of the Center for Climate Health and the Global Environment at Harvard. Gina McCarthy is back with us. Gina, how are you? Great to see you again. All right. Well, as someone whose uh, job had been the number one protector of our environment, these must be very trying days for you. I mean, it's trying days for anyone who picks up the paper. I don't see a headline that a week goes by that isn't, like, more alarming than it even was a couple of years ago. First, it was the insect apocalypse. All the insects are dying. Last week, it was the birds. We're killing, I think, a third of all the birds in North America. Are you doing this just to depress me? I am. I'm doing it to... Well, I, I want to answer. <laughs> I, yesterday, the, the, it was about the oceans. We've made a, a, a spit sink out of the oceans, and we can't live on this planet without the oceans. I just want to know, give it to me straight, Doc. Is it too late? Because I know they wouldn't tell us if it was. Because... We, I've had, I've read quotes from like James Hansen. Yeah. He said in 2006, we have to in the next 10 years decrease the re growth rate of CO2. If that doesn't happen within 10 years, we're going to pass these tick tipping points. Al Gore, inconvenient truth: the world will reach the point of no return if drastic measures weren't taken to reduce greenhouse gases by 2016. I see we've passed 4. 415 parts per million of carbon dioxide. I remember when they said you can't pass 400. So. What say you? Well, what I say is that we have a big challenge ahead, but it's not too late. And I say to you that we have to work together. I can't, by myself, tell you that we're not past tipping points. But if you can't do something about this shit, right. then stop worrying about it. Let's just do what we can do. There right. are so many and things that we can do. Can't we focus you know, on that? They're good the stuff. I, I, I read Al Gore's uh, op-ed in the New York Times last Sunday, and, you know, I didn't realize we actually are so close. We're so close. Some of the things he points out, as recently as 2014, electricity from solar and wind was cheaper only in about 1% of the world. Five years later, these are the cheapest amazing. sources in yeah. two-thirds of the yeah. world. We yeah. actually are not that far yeah. away. Germany gets all of, ele of its electricity now from renewables. And Bill, you asked me about how do I feel now. There's all kinds of rollbacks at EPA going on, and, oh. and I get that. But there's two things that, that, you know, really I keep telling myself every morning. One is that they're not particularly good at governing, so they stink at rollbacks. They have an 8% uh, approval rating in the courts. So we're doing pretty good. Oh. And, and the other thing is So that, everything we read about that they try to do... Oh, yeah, not, they, they do a lot of announcements. Well, well it, if you're trying not, to you're, do it... But you're saying it's not happening. Anymore. No, because... Oh. Well, and I'm saying See? that now what I do they're feel trying better. to do is come to a specific outcome that's right. contrary to law and science. And when it gets to the courts, they don't tend to appreciate that. Right. But the, uh, you know, but the other thing is that we've got to stop focusing everything we think about on climate or other things, about what Trump is or isn't doing or what his administration is doing. Let's talk about what's really going on in the real world. You mentioned that. Clean energy is going gangbangers because right. it's cheaper, it's better, <laughs> yeah, the air is cleaner. Oh, that's too... Oh, my God. You, you, you meant... <laughs> You meant gangbusters. Did I say gangbangers? <laughs> yes, you did. Well, that was because I listened to your monologue. <laughs> You're right. Blame it on me. Mr. Potty Mouth. It's, it's infectious. But, um... but <laughs> let, let's, start, let's start that over again. Yeah. A lot of good things happened. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the best one was... Was the gang... Oh, no. Was Greta Thunberg. You're at the UN Climate... I mean, you know about this young lady from Sweden? Yeah. She's a teenager. She <laughs> sailed across the ocean. Show it. I mean, this was... This has already, I think, become iconic, but I want to show it tonight. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering... People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. And, you know, this is because 
kid, this week, kids all over the world went on a, yeah. a climate strike. Apparently, they're pissed off that we've robbed them of their entire future and killed the planet. They're always uh, so picky, those Yeah, kids, they're so okay? picky, the kids. But I, it reminds me a little of the Vietnam protests when I was young because they have skin in the game. Yeah. Unlike yeah. other generations, they really feel it and they see it and they know, yeah. Christ, what the world, what is the world going to be like when I'm 40? I think 40? there is a feel right now that, we're, that yeah. we have reached a tipping point. We're not going to tolerate it anymore. Right. And we recognize that we have a moral responsibility so, and we have to meet it.